put down your phone for a few minutes and imagine peace with a couple of film cameras. In 2020, you can say doom scroll, and just about everyone knows what you're talking about. The phenomenon when you're on Twitter, mostly, and you're just scrolling to see what awful thing happens next. I'm a trained journalist, and I credit the Associated Press Wire with training me how to navigate tr Twitter. I'll spare you the details about why that is, and I'll just let you know that I am probably more inured to scrolling on Twitter for endless minutes or hours more than most. But honestly, I've been getting totally fatigued with the U.S. election and pandemic and all that stuff, and I really needed a break. So I decided to take a break with a new Bronica ETRS that I'm testing out. So I opted for some escapism in this park that I've lived by in like almost half my life but haven't touched, and Kaylee, who I've shot with several times. I'm very fortunate to have photography not only as a job, but a hobby and a personal passion and basically a small form of therapy. At the end of the video, I'll give a little bit of a first blush review of what I think of some of the nitty gritty, but I'll say that the Bronica is an interesting experience and I have been meaning to shoot with them for a long time. For those who don't know, the Bronica 645 cameras, that's a 6 centimeters by 4.5 centimeters negative size, kind of like a really uh, husky 35 millimeter. I have wanted to try them for a while. I've kind of played around with a couple. But I've never actually done it until this one came across for a really cheap price and I just wanted to see what it was like before I either sold it or decided to hang on to it and I will say that this one is pretty beat up but it worked and one of the things I like about the Bronica and I won't get too far even into first impressions territory here because this is literally like a test the camera shoot but one of the things I like about it it has a leaf shutter, which means you can do full flash sync. And I haven't done full flash sync photos or any flash photos probably for a couple of years now. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to stay that way. This park really blew me away. I could not believe that I basically spent a decade or more around this and never even bothered. So uh, let that be a lesson to you. Take a second, look around, don't be cynical, and you might find some real fun stuff. And we wanted to go down in that creek area, but it wasn't going to happen this time. But we will do that next time. So as you can see, fall was in pretty solid effect here. It was sunset, which meant like it was kind of 4 o'clock. Not as bad as like the East Coast or whatever, or when I lived in Minnesota when it was pretty much dark by 3.30, which messes with my brain in awful ways. Oh, I'd like to thank my patrons listed here on the screen. You help make this possible. For as little as a dollar a month, you can join my Patreon. And let me tell you, that's really helpful right now. I know I said I brought this Bronica, but I bought it for super cheap to sell it or to sell another 645 camera or something like that. So no, <laughs> I need money. So uh, I really appreciate them. And if you want to check it out, I really appreciate that. But yeah. Uh, beautiful light though and some people you might see them in the distance somewhere were hitting the pipe really hard like you could smell the weed from like yards and yards away but I digress uh, I really like this spot and we're gonna go back out here sometime very soon to actually get down in there and get some photos but we decided to stay clean today and it was also um, you know nearing dark when we shot this despite how it looks and I guess I should talk about the film I was using. The first few shots were on Ektar 100, and these are on Lomography 800, which continues to be one of my favorite films. The Ektar wasn't bad. I could see some weird color shifts, but I really liked how clean and contrasty it was. But I love how the color renders on Lomo 800. And sticking with the 800 theme, I also shot a roll of Cinestill 800, which might seem really weird, to people who are used to only seeing it like for lights at night and stuff like that. I really like Cinestill 
in these kind of open shade areas and maybe not necessarily in the blazing backlight all the time but if there's shade or if it's a cloudy overcast type day it's beautiful and i wanted to see how it exactly looked uh, just on this normal day because if this were were cloudy or something i'd love it but you'll see in a second on this bridge that i decided to shoot with some direct light now i did not correct this with any kind of filter I did everything balanced in Negative Lab Pro. I didn't even use the Cine Still Steading on Negative Lab Pro. I just balanced by the rebate border. This was the last shot on um, Alomo 800, and I think that's one of the reasons why the corners on that one picture were, were really weird. And uh, I think that's also what happens when it's just underexposed. And you'll see this picture on Cinestill 800, which I just once again completely love in this open shade lighting. Yeah, that's good. That looks great. But you'll see in a moment that uh, the highlights on these rails get the oh, cool. trademark Cinestill halation, which I frankly like because I like imperfections, for lack of a better word. I like the grain. I like a little bit of a little bit of character in my photos. Maybe I just went full opposite of what I was doing for years, like which was just exceptional digital cleanliness and beauty and hyper detail. But I'm still getting a good amount of detail. I'm shooting medium format. But uh, it, it's nice to be able to get this kind of color as an alternative to a film like a Portra or something like that. If you enjoy these behind the scenes videos and looks at different film cameras and film stocks and just life as a film photographer, please subscribe, turn on notifications, like the video and share it. Thanks. And yeah, that was more Cinestill still right there. And you can see the halation on the highlights on the rails. And I sometimes will see halation like around hair and stuff like that. But in this case, I mostly just saw it on the railing. Anyway, I still really love the color rendition. This whole shoot was along this short stretch of the walking trail at this park. So we did a lot of backtracking because sunsets, if you haven't shot in many of them, you'll notice that sunsets are pretty quick moving. When you see a light or a shadow or something in one place, uh, you pretty much need to take, take advantage of it or if it's just slightly off, wait a few minutes and it'll probably be in a different spot. And it probably wasn't very long after we wrapped this shoot that the whole trail was just in overcast and darkness. And I just loved how, how open these areas looked and we couldn't quite get in there, at least not, um, not without some protective footwear for any ticks or anything that might be hiding in there. And yeah, people were walking on the trail and social distancing Please note that we're in the open air, it's not a very heavily populated park, and we took care to keep a, a pretty decent distance between ourselves. Alright, oh, that's it. <laughs> cool. And I would like to also point out, I love the out of focus character of this Bronica 75mm 2.8 lens. I didn't expect that at all, I expected, you know, 2.8 softness or something, but it might be something that somebody would call like a busy bokeh, busy bokeh, but I really love it. It's got this shimmering effect, which really uh, is alluring to me. All in all, it was a great productive break from doom scrolling. And click on the video to the left to see what YouTube thinks you should watch mine, and click on the video to the right to see a playlist of videos that I think you'd enjoy. Click on my face to subscribe if you haven't. Thanks, and I will see you next week.